So hey, I'm looking around here. How many, how many of you wear glasses? How many of you wear, wear glasses? Come on, look, look around. That's probably, I, I would say, 80% of us wear glasses, right? And, and so pretty, pretty cool. Um, and so uh, don't you, I, I hate that you always got, I, and I touch my glasses, I get, I get uh, and there are, all of us wear sunglasses, so we know that. Uh, but like when I get a thumbprint on my glasses or something happens and you open it up a Diet Coke, which I shouldn't open up, and a, 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 you know, the, 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 it sprays on me, and, and what do you do that? And you carry around these little, uh, little, little uh, wipes, right? Or, or a little spray. It's easy to carry around these wipes, and you take these wipes. Why? Because you want to see, right? God's created us to see, it is, and it is good to see. So we take these wipes, right, and we, 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 uh, we, 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 we clean off, uh, right, the, uh, the, the fingerprints or the, the smudges, or uh, sometimes you, when you're going from a, a warm place to a cold place, you ever get your glasses to fog up, right? How many of you, how many of you like that? And uh, so I don't know if that was me. Is that the power or what? But, um, or, or, or like when you went to get your glasses, you had to go to a, 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 an eye doctor and you had to take an, uh, and look at an eye chart, you know, and you have to read all the way down so they can determine uh, your, your level of uh, uh, the strength of your eyes, right? So what they are. Well, in the same thing, we got to talk about uh, our lives. And so each one of us have a worldview. Each one of us have a view of God. And I just want to make sure that, you, that your view of God is always, right, being reflected according to the Word of God, right? So we, we have to be able to see, right, and even refocus some of the things that maybe we believe from growing up about the world or about church or even about God, because so many of us have a wrong view and, and, and a picture of God, and we don't know the God of the Bible, right? We, we, we experience the God of the Old Testament, right? And we think that God is this guy that's trying to kill and wipe out and just destroys and annihilates uh, things. But that was a picture of sin and impurity and a lack of holiness. And so when Jesus died on the cross, right, right, he came and he fulfilled all of the judgment, all of God's pain, all of sin, all of sickness, all of poverty on the cross, and then he rose again, and now we live on the other side of the cross. So as believers, now you got to live on this side of the cross. We learn the types and shadows from the Old Testament, right, that, that, that the, the children of Israel were walking to the cross, walking to the promise. Now they get fulfilled with the promise of Jesus Christ, and now we get to walk and live this champion life, and we have to see how God sees us, not see tradition, right, not get confused, right, but, but learn, and that's why it's so important that we discover God, so we have to focus, we have to clean our glasses, we have to daily, right, say, hey, God, help me see, I want to see clearly, I want to have clear vision, I want to know you, our heart has eyes to see the loving Father, so I'm going to talk about refocusing because uh, there is unexpected in life, right? Come on, right? Life can get out of control. Life gets out of focus at times, but we have to learn, right, how to constantly be refocusing on the, the image that God has, and it's the cross. We got to constantly be focusing on the cross, right, and the promise of the cross, and what Jesus says, like, we have to daily refocus, right? You, you God sends you, you, you know, you go take a picture of something, right, and then you got to refocus on that. Maybe something's a little closer, and you refocus on that, and so we're, we're constantly in this daily refocusing of what God has, because life, right, needs refocused, right? We have to learn how to refocus. We have to learn how to adjust, because somebody realized that life can get blurry, Right, you can get hit hard, right? You can uh, get beat up, right? Life can beat you up. You can get punched in the face, right? You, and and and. But I want you to know through all of that, right? Because we live in a world, right? We live in a fallen world, right? We live in a world where there's pain and suffering, but we don't have to realize that we have to walk through this pain and suffering uh, on our own, and we have to realize that God is walking with us through that, but not, God is not the source of all suffering, right? There are some things that he allows us to, to go through, but we have to realize, so we have to focus in on that, 
right, and realize that this Psalm 23, God says, I will walk with you through the fiery trials. He says in the word of God, I will never leave you nor forsake you, right? So to me, right, I, I, I have this thought called refocusing is retrusting, right? Refocusing is retrusting. So I got to constantly be trusting God. So I got to constantly, right, be looking at that image, right? And sometimes I'm zooming in. Sometimes I'm zooming out to get a big picture. Sometimes we got to get the view of the 30,000 foot view of God. And sometimes, right, we're getting this one centimeter view of what the Lord is showing us because he's an amazing God. And so as we follow that. So in this present day reality, I want to ask you what you're focusing on. And what are you focusing on? So is it the issues that are dominating your life, or is it the Almighty God? Like you, have to, you have to decide, right? Like, hey, is this issue going to dominate my thoughts and dominate my focus, or am I going to right, focus on the Almighty God? Uh, when, when I was a, a, a youth pastor, um, I used this illustra- illustration uh, many, many times, and I'm trying to see, uh, with, uh, okay, I'll pull out a pen. And, and so in the, in, if I take this pen and I throw it in the middle of this, this auditorium, right, it's really not a big deal compared to the, the, the size of this place. A, a little bit ago, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of my, my OCD. So we're worshiping God there. And, 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 and there's this, uh, this rock, uh, a piece of dust on, on the stage here. This is a great illustration. And I'm focusing on the, the stupid dust bunny while you guys are worshiping. And I'm sitting there battling in my mind. It's not a big deal, Larry. It's, no one's going to go to hell because there's dust bunny on the stage. And I'm going, there's a dust bunny on the stage. God, I can't worship. <laughs> and I would worship. I'd get my eyes on God. And then all of a sudden, look, and I would see the dust bunny. And I would be like, man. Should I go get the dust bunny in middle worship? No. And, and, and guess God made a way for me to put it in my sermon. I wasn't planning on it. So I can get rid of this dust bunny right here on, the, on that. See what I'm talking about? Focusing on the wrong thing? I was focusing on a dust bunny doing worship. I'm not proud of that. I mean, you know, I mean, like, it's a great illustration, but it's reality. So I am battling it in my mind. Worship, dust bunny, dust bunny, right? I might use that again. All right. <laughs> Save that. <laughs> Put that in a Ziploc bag. Don't, don't let it blow away. So refocusing is retrusting, right? And so in the midst of this pen, if, if, if this pen is right here, it's all I can focus on. If, 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 if your problem, it's really minimal to God. And you, we, we think it's big. It could be financial. It could be relation. It could, you listen, we talked this weekend, there might be some marriages here that, man, you guys have been punching each other, right? Maybe physically. Maybe there's been some infidelity. Maybe, the, maybe y'all haven't had sex in a long time. Maybe, maybe there's issues. Maybe there's unforgiveness. There's jealousy. There's hurt. Maybe you've been abandoned, right? I, I don't know, but, but guess what? If you focus on the pain instead of focusing on the Almighty, on the presence, right? So what are you focusing on? And when I refocus, I trust, and I trust, put my trust in God. No, whatever. We can put our whatever X in the middle of that, right? What are we focusing on? And we constantly, right, the, the battle of me constantly battling in my mind on worship over, over something that's really insignificant, right? And that's what usually what happens, and it takes our joy. It steals our joy. Uh, it steals our peace, Right? It steals, right, what God is, wants us to focus on him today, and it steals the opportunities away from us that the Lord has for us. So is it the issue that you're focusing on? Is it the Almighty? Is it Jesus? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says this. Check this out. It says, trust in the Lord completely, and do not rely on your own opinions. That's a word for somebody. With all of your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you are to go. Trust in the Lord completely. 
Like, it's, it's, it's a proverb. Like, the proverbs are words of wisdom. And so, every day we want to live a wise life. And so, the proverbs guide us and direct us. And so, uh, the, the writer says, possibly Solomon, I'm not sure, haven't looked, but saying, hey, trust in God completely. Don't get focused on the, 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 the things that don't matter. Trust in me, right? Trust in me. So here's, here's the thought. How we view things is how we do things, right? Put that up on the screen, guys. How we view things is how we do things, and how we view God is how we trust God. So true, right? If, if I view myself, and we all battle insecurity, right? Come on. We, we all want to, we all have fears that we need to walk and overcome, right? But if, if I am viewing God as the one who's causing my pain, then then I will live my life according to that. I won't trust him. But how I, how, how I view a task, right? How, how, I, how, how, I, how I view leadership or how I view marriage, right? If, if, if marriage isn't number one, God isn't number one, and my marriage isn't there, then I will let my marriage, right, get out of shape. It's because if I don't view the, the, the covenant that God has given in a marriage or in a relationship, and then I won't fall through. But the same side of it is how I view God. God. How do you view God? What's going on in your world right now? Do, do, do you know the promise that God has for your ex, your situation? Because I guarantee if you refocus on this, it's going to renew your mind. Right? It's going to renew or refocus our mind. We have to, according to Romans, right, we have to renew our mind, right? Don't be conformed, it says in Romans, to this world, but be transformed by renewing our mind. We renew our mind by this. The word, how, 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 how important is God's word? Do you realize that that worship and reading God's word and spending time in prayer reshapes, refocuses our, our day, it refocuses our life, right? When, when we take time, right, to, to look into God's word, it's, it's, it, we look through this, it's the lens that helps us see clearly. God's word, right? You have to get God's word in you, right? And so you can get it in your heart, and so you can walk by it. And so that's why... The Bible says that you got to continually feed yourself. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And I mean feed yourself. you got to feed yourself the word. Faith, right, is God's word. When you read God's word out loud, when you pray God's word, when you hear a message, when you listen to a, 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 a podcast or a sermon, what is it doing? It's building faith in you. It's going in this mind, and it's creating God's worldview so you can see clearly and not see with stamps, right? Not see with fingerprints, right? And so uh, the Bible is God's lens, right? Worship, when you realize that, just that little thing distracted me, right? We've been there. But when, when, when we get alone and get in God's presence, like this Friday night, we're having a, a, a re refresh revival. Man, these, guys, these nights, you walk away because we spend a lot of time on worship in his presence, and we change perspective. It lifts your countenance. It, it refocuses and, and refocusing, like you retrust. You get that. You get something that happens in you. So no matter what you're facing, it doesn't matter what you're facing. Guess what? God is there to, to get us through. And prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer truly refocuses our direction. Pr prayer truly takes our, our, our constant situation on us are focusing on this little little bitty problem and we get it on this massive and amazing God but this massive amazing God he knows the number of hairs on your head he knows he thinks about you so that God is not 
a old world view of God or uh, improper view of God. Like, oh yeah, God's just sitting in heaven. He doesn't really care about me. No, no, no. He cares about you. He says, Matthew wrote that God knows when, when, when a, a bird, a little, what they call them, swallow, right? Sparrow? Yeah. <laughs> when a little sparrow falls to the ground. God knows that. And just, can you imagine if you live in an area when you see all of these birds, right? God knows when one sparrow falls to the ground, he, he knows it's our need. And he knows what you need, right? And so that's the, the power of God. And so prayer helps us get that realigned perspective. We, we, we talk about this all the time. Our, our take 15. And it's like, why do you talk about it? Because Christians, believers, are struggling because they don't know the word. You struggle. I can almost predict what's going on in your life and the amount of word you know about that situation. And I, I'm still growing. I was listening to a preacher yesterday. I listened to a sermon every morning. I was listening to this guy, Andrew Womack, yesterday morning uh, before the... Um, we came here, and he said, I've been doing this 52 years, like pre preaching, studying the Bible. And he goes, I still learned something new in my quiet time this morning. I'm like, Come on, 50 years. This dude is amazing. This dude's, this dude's prayed for people, and he, he's raised people up from the dead. I mean, people get walk in with cancer, get heat, I mean, like, and, and, and believe for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Like, I mean, I, I, I'm learning from this guy. I'm not even... Uh, you know, just dirt underneath his fingernails was a faith that I wish I had. And it's like, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, but, but this is so important. He's talking about if Christians can just get a hold of the truth of God's word. And so that's why we do connect groups. That's why we have uh, a situation, journey school. That's why we have theology for dummies, right? Now, you can go to theology for dummies or journey school. It, does, it, it might make you knowledgeable. It doesn't, it's not going to make you love and serve Jesus. Hello? Just because you come and you're like, hey, I learned something new about end times. Or I learned something new about, uh, uh, you know, about being a leader in journey school. whoop de doo <laughs> Okay, I know, I know about the Nephilim. It's not going to make me love Kim more. It's not going to make me be a better pastor. Yeah, but, but when I get insight from, from that truth, when I, get, when I hear the word and I begin to apply it, it helps me walk out my faith. Right? And we are to walk by faith and not by sight. So it is vital that you get involved in a Bible study or a Bible teaching thing. Right? And not just, not just get involved, but you need to have your own Bible study. And we, we can teach you how to do it in 15 minutes. Worship God, pray, and, and somebody will meet with you. But you got to want it. Right? Um, Pastor Nick and Jen did such a great job yesterday. They, they, they were teaching uh, on, on their story in their life, and, 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 uh, and I remember telling Pastor Nick that I said, hey, they, you know, because, Jen, can I share what you sent the text yesterday? Jen, Pastor Nick and Jen, yesterday, eight years ago, from, it was eight years ago that Jen, Jen was on a vacation with, with some of her girlfriends, and she decided that weekend that she was going to come home and divorce Nick. What's going to stand? But no, 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 you can't. Sorry about it. Let me rewind that. Jen came home and was thinking about divorcing me. But God got involved in life because God saw his hands in life. And they're not any special. We're not, no one's special. All of you, God sees. You just, but they gave God a chance. And here it was eight years later from I'm going to divorce. We're going to divorce. Because the divorce papers were on their island when they came to church the first time. Right? They came and God touched their heart. God touched their heart. And the thing is that they continue to grow in God and put God's word first. Right? And so you got to continue to grow and grow and, and seek, seek God. And so that's why we, we kind of, right? Come on. And it's when you spend time with Jesus, man, when you encounter God, when you refocus on Him, it transforms. How we view God is in how I can trust God. Like He's going to come through. And in that, in, that, in, that, in that simple step of obedience, wow, right? Amazing.
So there's a, there's a quick Bible story I want to I wanna, uh, read to us in Mark 8. Um, it's, the, it's a story about Jesus healing a blind man. And so um, let's, let's, let's look at it. Uh, well, I don't have it up on the screen, but it's Mark 8, 22 through 26. Jesus heals blind eyes, okay? So when Jesus arrived at Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus, begging Jesus to touch him and heal him, all right? So Jesus then took the man, led him as a sighted guide. So Jesus took the man, led him outside the village, right? Because probably everybody was there. He needed to, get, he needed to speak to the man one-on-one. And he placed his saliva on the man's eyes. I, I don't want to get a uh, biggie, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I don't think it was a hockey. I just think he just got some saliva. Now, think about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Touched, like, was stuffed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Saliva, right? <laughs> Jesus, what you doing? Now, Jesus healed. Just so you know, that's, I've, Never put saliva on anybody. <laughs> I don't plan on it. But Jesus had healed, uh, I think there's seven different ways, five to seven different ways Jesus healed people. And, and he was just showing, like, I'm the healer. I heal in different forms and fashions, right? And so, so Jesus, you know, kind of gets that. And, and then he goes, hey, Jesus asks a question, do you see? <laughs> like, of course not. And I got Cook in my eyes. <laughs> I got spit in my eyes. What do you think, Jesus? Uh, you know, so Jesus said, do you see? And, the guy, and this is what the guy's response. It says this. He says, my sight is coming back. I'm beginning to see people, but they look like trees, walking trees. So his sight was there. So Jesus then came and put his hands on him again over the man's eyes, not with any saliva, just his hands. And he, and he said, look up. And the man opened his eyes. And he can see everything perfectly. His eyesight was completely restored, and Jesus sent him back home with these instructions. Don't tell him. Don't tell people what happened, because he wanted, he wanted people to kind of discover uh, that, not come after Jesus for a miracle man, come after Jesus because he's a, he's a man of love. And so the fact is like, hey, my eyesight, so my, I'm asking you, how's your eyesight coming back? What are you refocusing on? If you've been hurt by church? Right? Or you don't understand something. It's not that you stay away. Jesus wants you to come so you can see clearly. You know what? You know what I've discovered about my life and your life, and I'm a, I'm a human just as you are, is that when I sin, now sin's already been taken care of on the cross. So my sin is already forgiven. I just got to just ask and repent. And change, right? So you realize that your sin, past, present, and future has already been forgiven on the cross. But we need to receive forgiveness. Is that the difference, right? So when I sin, sin means miss the mark. When I miss the mark of walking with God, and, I, and then my own spirit, because of the word, says, hey, that was wrong. You were very angry, and you went over the line. You crossed into sin, because you can be angry and not sin, but you can be angry and sin. And when you explode and your temper gets there, all right, or let's just say some other addiction that you, that you have, I see Christians, they get so condemned and they get ashamed, and they don't come to church because they're full of shame. But Jesus already dealt with the shame and the condemnation for you. So when you're dealing with sin, when you're dealing with something, get help. That, that's what, that was a part of the, 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 the testimony that Kim and I had. It's like we went to get help to be healthy in our personal lives so we can have a healthy marriage, so we can lead a healthy church. And yes, we all battle sin and shame, but when you know God's word, you know that the blood of Jesus covers all of our sin and our shame and our sickness, right? And so don't stay away from God. Run to God. And so the fact is, like, how's you see? Is my, hey, if you, if you just, so I love the fact that Jesus said, hey, can you see? Uh, I, no, not really. Come on. Come on. There's more. There's more. 
A lot of times we like to pray for somebody and like do the, like the microwave prayer. We expect something to happen, right? When, when, when we need to take time, and especially praying for people who are sick, right, or pray, praying through something. But we don't need to beg God. All we got to do is just thank God, right, and just say, come on, thank you for the healing. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for, for what you're doing in my life. Because why? It's a gift of God. It's called grace. It's called grace. It's called God's grace. And so the man said, yes, my sight's coming back. I'm beginning to see people like trees. Jesus said, come back. So listen, God wants to get our view, right, refocused. So if your view of Jesus or your view of stuff, it, it like keep coming back. Keep saying, I want more of you, God, more of you, God. He wants to help heal the hurts. He wants to help heal uh, your heart. That's the beautiful thing of God. So some practical thoughts on refocusing. Remember the big picture. Right. Remember what this is. Like, don't get focused on the, the tiny. Listen, God's, God's got this 30,000-foot view. Like, you know, when you're sitting up in an airplane and you look down, can you, it, it's amazing. And God knows everyone's address, and he knows everyone who lives in their house, and he knows the pain, right, and some of the sick, evil stuff that his heart breaks over that's happening in homes, right? And he knows, the, he knows where his, 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 his lights are, his children, and he wants, to, he wants to send us into these neighborhoods. Like, God... Got this 30,000 foot view, but yet he also knows what you're going through. He knows your struggle. He knows he's got the street view. Right? He knows your address. He's the postman, and he always delivers on time. He's the postman, and he always, Holy Spirit always delivers on time. Revelation 22 right, talks about he's the alpha and the omega. Remember, he's the big picture. He's the beginning and the end, alpha and Right? Greek is the beginning. Omega, the end. Like he who started a work and he's going to be completed. Second thing to help and refocus and realize that it's okay not to be okay at times. It's okay not to be okay because you will be okay again. It's okay not to be okay because you will be okay again. Right? So when life right, hits you upside the head, and you're going through a rough time. Like, don't quit. Press on toward the, the call. Press on toward the goal. Get the, get the vision. Winston Churchill said this. Hey, if you're going through hell, don't stop. Just keep going. What we want to do is we want to go through, when we're going through different calls, we want to tell the whole world and tell everybody on Facebook and Instagram. We want to get everybody to start what they're doing. When, when you think you're asking people for prayer, you're asking people for worry, right? And sometimes we call we call. Prayer, worry. Oh, God, who is this? Right, and we don't, listen, when you're going through a difficult time, just keep going. Keep walking by faith, not by sight. Keep walking by faith and not by sight. Keep refocusing, right? Keep spending time in prayer. Keep spending time with him. Get, just don't stop, right? Get help along the way. Get, uh, get, get seek counsel from somebody that's been there, right? Don't seek counsel from somebody that's struggling like you, Right? And so God wants, because people here, we love, this is the family of God. And the, and the third thing, uh, the, a third pr practical thought is know what restores you, right? Uh, like if you're going to refocus, what, what, what restores you? Sometimes it's just having a hobby, hanging out with a friend with coffee, taking a walk, just sitting down, going fishing, I mean, going to a, a, a refresh revival night. What restores you, right? Because when we get our eyes off the wrong goal, right? When our eyes get when our eyes get on the wrong goal, right, we just got to stop, refocus, and we got to be restored. I, I like to say it with like this. I, I, I think moments with the Master. We need moments with God. We need moments with the master. The scripture in Philippians 3, uh, 13 and 14, says, I forget those things which lie behind, right, the things that have tripped up, but I, but I focus my eyes. I focus my eye on the goal. I press toward the mark of the high calling in Jesus. I, I press toward that, that high calling with Jesus Christ. My, my, my thought is here is this refocusing, it's consistency. You got to consistently, 
Consistency wins the race. Consistency, day by day. Yeah? I, 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 want, I was just looking through all my soaps for the last two years. Last night, there was no football on, nothing really to watch, you know. And uh, we had already watched The Traders, me and my Kim, and we were watching Traders. And I was like, hmm. So I was just kind of reading, and I was just going through all my soaps. And I was like, God, Lord, you taught me that? Whoa, that's good. I mean, and and I, I went back, and I realized, just spending some time with God, I'm like, I have to preach that. That's good. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and just the, the time that you'll hear God's word. But it's consistency. It's consistency. Being here with your family and your kids, right, it's consistency. It, like our next gen, I mean, the, what's happening downstairs right now is powerful, right? What's happened in the, uh, in the in night plus and then tonight, like, come on. It's teenagers need consistency. I mean, teen, I mean, working with teenagers, we still do a youth camp over and over again. I, 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 I know for sure, man, there's, there's times that teenagers, man, they, they hate the world. They hate mom and dad. But the next thing is like this. You follow me? Teen, uh, emotional. So are we. Right, right. We, we sometimes we're, we act like adolescents because, but the key is they're teaching our young people how to soap, how to get in God's word, so that they can move on when they go in their life. They have a foundation. Do you have that foundation? What are you focusing on, right? And so it's it, it's consistency is important. I, I close with this, and our our team can come back up. So, um, this is a football. And uh, I, I had the opportunity of coaching football for 14 years. And, uh, and I came up here from New Orleans, got to go to Geneva, got to meet uh, my best friend, Barry Emke. Oh, by the way, Barry Emke, you just got nominated and, and going to be inducted into the Geneva Sports Football Hall of Fame this fall. Isn't that incredible? Come on. Can, can you catch? Uh, I thought you could catch, man. Yeah, you got a bad wrist now. I know we've been praying for that thing. You know, we don't want to, we're not going to throw you the ball, though you broke all the records. I know I've seen you catch. But uh, both Barry and I had coached at Geneva. And um, I'm, oh, that's coach right there, man, right there. Coach is the D, my man. All right. Uh, so we got, some, we got some Geneva folks here. Oh, there you go. But when I coached, and I coached three years at Geneva and, and then 11 years in high school. And, um, and, and I, I, I tried to find the simple things, like, like for your life. Like, what's this, what's, what will help you win? Well, if you're going to be a receiver, you've got to catch the ball. And so I always taught, like, you know, everybody says, how do you catch the football? With your hands. No, no, you catch it with your eyes. And I've used this illustration before here. And so when a quarterback throws the ball and it's sparring, I always say, you catch the football with, with, with your eyes. But follow the cross, like this little X right here. You got to focus in on the cross, the X. So when you practice just five yards away, just getting their eyes to focus in on, not, not, not just, you know, it's not a big ball, but, a, but the, just a little thing. I, uh, I, I talked to, a, I'm not a good baseball guy, couldn't hit very well, but I talked to a hitting coach, and he says he, he teaches the, his guys to focus in on like a dot on the baseball. So they see the ball, but they see it smaller so they can connect the bat with the ball. The same thing. So why am I bringing up this? Is like my, my little illustration to players was as you go on to catch, look, look, at, look at the X. Focus in on the X, right? And then you look at the cross, and then you look it, and then you tuck it, and you always stay looking at the X, the cross. Same thing for our life. What are you focusing on? I sure hope it's the cross, but the finished work of the cross, right? We're going to have Good Friday service coming up here in, a, in, a, in about a month, right? We're going to pack this bad boy out. I don't know how we're going to do it. <laughs> it'll be fun. It'll be a great service, but uh, it might, it'll be Santa Ramon Lane. Uh, but it'll be a fun night, but uh, it's, Good Friday is all about the cross. Our walk with God is all about the cross. And what the finished work of the cross was. God, from the beginning with Adam and Eve, when they sinned, he said, I got, a, I got a solution. It was the cross. And he prophesied that Jesus would crush the head of the snake. He would bite his heel, but he would, Jesus would crush the head. That was a picture of the cross. 
And so it's all about the cross. It's all about what you're, what you're focusing in on. And so my exhortation to us today is keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's focus on, on him. So close your eyes right now. Father, we, uh, we thank you. Thank you for the cross. We thank you that we can focus in on you, God. Lord, you know where we are. Lord, that we would have a a proper view of you, God. Lord, renew our mind according to your goodness and your word, Father. We trust in you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. love you, God. Lord, as we reflect, we, uh, we say, show us as we make a prayer to you right now what we're going to refocus. What do we need to, what do you, what do you need to refocus a part of your life on? Find it in the word. Find it in God's peace. Find it in God's love. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, move. Speak to our hearts right now. We thank you, God. Lord, that we have renewed eyes, redeemed eyes. Father, a renewed confidence and trust in you that, Lord, you get us through every storm, every difficulty of life. Yes, God, even when we're going through difficult times, that we keep our eyes upon you, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, you are the author and the finisher. Lord, you are the beginning and the end and all in between. God, you who started a good work in us is faithful to complete. We love you, God. 